I bought a second hand suitcase. A San Michelle suitcase. I quite like this lock because it's got rubber handles, tough case, but what really interests me is the lock. At the moment it's set to all zeros and it works. To change this combination there's a little button underneath. I'm going to press it up. Okay, going to, this is actually upside down, so I'm going to change it to one, two, three, one, two, three, and lock that in place. Okay, so that works. If I go back to, if I go back to zeros. It doesn't open, but the one, two, three, it opens. Okay, so if I lock this up, put it back to zeros. So what happens if you arrive at your hotel and you've forgotten your combination? No worries. There's a way to get into this non-destructively. Now you can't use the pull picking method or push picking method because if you push down here it affects the levers but it's not directly connected to the wheel. So no matter how hard you push down you're not going to get any feedback from any of the wheels. And if you put it even while you're pushing down, if you put it to the right combination it still doesn't open until you release and push down again. So how can you get into this lock if you've lost your combination? Well, you can use a small piece of metal if you don't have the right tool, no worries, buy a can of your favourite soda, cut the aluminium with a pair of scissors like I've done here, it's very thin aluminium, I've put a mark on it and I'm going to put it behind the wheels You see how it, it, it doesn't go in? I'm going to do it a little bit of a left angle actually. If I turn it to this number, it goes in. Here's to the left. Here's not to the left, but if I turn it here, then it's to the left. Okay, so I've got it dropping down in all three. All other numbers, it doesn't drop down. Can test every single number, but as soon as you find the right number, then you do it for each wheel and you found the hole or the flat surface where I think the the way this lock works it tensions the spring on a fork and the teeth of the fork have to go down on this flat surface in order for the lever to open the lock. So now we've got each of them in the right place we have to turn all of them one by one and keep going until the lock opens. This is quite a common technique for combination locks. And for this lock, turning it one all by one doesn't open the lock. Turning all by one again, it opens the lock. Okay, so that's how you can decode the combination lock. The second method to open this lock, I've shown previously that these TSA locks, and this is TSA 00, that I've opened them with a bobby pin. So what I've done is I've opened out a bobby pin, I've removed the plastic ends with my teeth, when I push together these come together but I've got a little bit of a something here to, to tension it. 
Now, I had problems at first because I didn't realize that this lock, it doesn't turn to the right, it turns to the left. So once I figured that out, I was able to pick it with a bobby pin. So I'll put this in. All right, so I'm going to wiggle it up and down as well as turning to the left. And there it goes turning to the left. So now it opens. Okay, I need to pick this back closed. So again, up and down, turning to the, to the right. And there it goes closed. Okay, so that's the second way to get into this lock. There's a third way to get into this lock. You get your small pick. Okay, you might not have a pick at a hotel, but you can get that same bobby pin. You can put it in the lock, bend it this way, not this way, not this way, but side on. It's quite, you have to hold it quite carefully, and then you'll get something resembling this with the curve at the end. I've done it before and opened this lock. I'm not going to do it again because I'm interested in the non-destructive way and poking around there with a bobby pin is liable to ruin this lock. It's liable to damage the lock. So I'm just going to use this tool, but if you get really stuck, then a bobby pin can be used in exactly the same way to open this lock. So just like with that piece of aluminium where I put it behind the wheels, I'm going to put this behind the wheel, behind the third wheel, when it's upside down behind this wheel and to the right. I'm going to see if I can slide this down and around and then what I did is I slid it around and turned it outwards and then it opened. So I just pull that out. So if I show you in front, I slid it down and then turn it around. And so that's what I, but I did it behind the wheel. I put it down and around and then I turned it outwards and then it was able to open. So it's another way to open this lock to use that bypass technique. There's a fourth way to open this lock. The fourth way since this is a TSA lock, it's not a secret what the TSA keys are, and you can find all the keys online. It might not be practical if you're stuck in a hotel and forgot the combination, but if you're at home and you wanted a key, you could get the plans, you could file your own key, or you could 3D print a key and get into this lock that way. So those are the four ways how to get into this lock. Thanks.